Hello, this is Tom from the Dreamcast Junkyard. Uh, what you can see here on your screen is the first edition of the Dreamcast Junkyard Ultimate Collector's Guide, as you can see here. It's written by Mike Phelan with a foreword by myself. On the back, you've got the, uh, the Dreamcast Junkyard URL and also a credit there for the, uh, the guy who did the cover art, which is uh, Phil Hockaday. He's also a member of the uh, the Maximum Power Up podcast, so I'd recommend checking that out. Um, but yeah, we're here to basically have a quick look at what this book actually contains. Uh, I'm sure you've seen this design before on our um, banners for the different uh, events and things that we do, and also on our flyers. But uh, I just thought it was quite nice, and we, we thought we should keep it in keeping with all the other things that we do on the Dreamcast Junkyard. So let's have a quick look at the book itself. Do apologise if the quality is quite bad. I'm using a Panasonic Lumix camera to do this. It's not actually a video camera. I don't own a video camera. And so that's why my videos look a bit janky. Um, so first page, uh, you've got, you know, page numbers on there and a contents list. Again, I apologise for the crap quality of the video. But you've got contents list. You've got a forward there by, written by me. And then basically this book isn't, before I go any further, this book isn't the kind of thing that you will get from, say, um, Mr. Sid, uh, who did the visual compendium of the Commodore 64, um, or the ZX Spectrum book. It's not a coffee table art book, so I just want to make that clear, first of all. This is, as it says on the front, a collector's guide, something that a collector will use when they are looking to maybe complete a full set of a certain type or all types of Dreamcast game, be that PAL, NTSC U or NTSC J, or even things like white labels, etc. So, uh, yeah, so first page, you've got the forward and the contents. And then the second and uh, third pages, you've got basically an introduction to the guide. It tells you exactly what, you know, how you use the guide, what the different um, little uh, tags mean on the later on in the book. Uh, Again, this camera's not good enough for me to kind of zoom in and show you exactly what, what's in here and what all the uh, sentences say. But you get an idea here from um, from what you can see on the screen. I just didn't want people to think it was like an art book or something because it's totally not what it is. Here you've got things like interesting details, rarity and ex expense. Uh, again, Mike, uh, Mike Phelan, the guy who wrote this book, has put so much effort into all this information. Um, so, yeah, you get... The first main section you get is a complete and you know complete checklist. Again, I can't really show you this without putting the book sideways because of the tripod that I'm using. But you've got the complete Dreamcast release list, and uh, this will go through every single version of every single game that was released in every territory. Multiple versions. You've got interesting facts. Like for example, here on this page, you've got a little passage about Christmas Seaman, and. Uh, Crazy Taxi, all the different entries there from the Japanese, the European, North American versions. Um, again, what this book does is it also gives you the the actual codes of the games. Again, my camera's not very good, so you probably can't see that very well. So you've got the different um, codings there for the different versions of the games. Also, which region it came out in and which language the manuals are in. Um, so this section of the book goes through every single different game again with little blurbs about you know things that are different about different versions moving on to uh, the next chapter when i can get there there's quite a lot of stuff here you yeah so here we've got the single game list which just lists all the games not concerned with the different um whether or not the us or japanese or pal so then we get through that section and then here we've got the unlicensed game section so this has got things like um upcoming games such as alice dreams tournament hypertension elysian shadows amoeba uh psl has actually just come out so we've missed that one so that's uh, that's a bit annoying but you know that will be rectified in in a later edition if there is one again here we've got more of the uh, games that aren't out yet saber rider and the star sheriffs uh, Slave, uh, Xenocider, which has only just been announced, and then we've got the unreleased, sorry, the unlicensed game list here. We've got Ducks, Ducks 1.5, uh, things like uh, Gunlord, Ghostblade, Fruity, which is another one that just came out. Um, 
so yeah, I mean, that's that's quite interesting if you're into indie releases. Moving on, we've got the f- complete North American list. You've got even details such as how many games released for each, uh, you know, each console. So you've got the number of US exclusives here, which is 26. You've got the total number of all versions of North American releases, that's 318. So there's, there's quite a lot of detail here. Uh, again, this one is the Japanese release section. So all the Japanese exclusives there and not exclusives. Uh, and then moving on, we've got the, the, one of the most interesting features of this book is the Japanese games accessibility list for non-Japanese speakers. And what it does is it breaks all of the library down into different sections. So you've got the A list, the B list, the C list, the D list, and the E list. And whichever list they fall in means how easy they are to play for someone who doesn't speak Japanese. So, for example, in the A list, you've got things like Capcom vs. SNK, um, Jet Set Radio, Daytona USA 2001, because they've got quite a lot of English in them, so you don't really need it. But as you go through the lists, the games get harder to actually play because you don't speak Japanese. And that's a really, really good guide to have if you're looking to complete your, or not, not complete your Japanese library, but just to collect Japanese games. Certainly, I've looked at this several times and I've been thinking, should I buy that on eBay? Do, do I even know I'm going to be able to play it? This is indispensable. So you've got the uh, the accessibility guide there. You've got the complete Japanese release list by code. This is the code that's actually on the side of the box. Uh, so there's that. And then moving on, you've also got the, the PAL game section. So this is just mirroring what's earlier in the book, but for the PAL game section. And also it shows you which manuals uh, which languages the manual is in. So you've got English, French, German, Spanish, Italian. Uh, moving on again. This is the, the PAL white label list. So this is basically detailing all the codes for the different white label releases. Uh, so if you're into white labels, then this could be quite useful for you. And uh, yeah, there, there's, there's also on this back page here, there's a, a, a European regional differences. Uh, so it basically just details what the differences are between the different European releases, as the name suggests. And uh, that's uh, that's the end of the that's the end of the guide. Uh, like I say, it's uh, 57 pages long. It's not pretty to look at. I mean, it's, it is literally just a, a textbook more than anything. But if you are interested, well, if you're interested in collecting for the Dreamcast, then this is pretty much an indispensable guide and if you wanted to see what games you you know you, you're probably missing from your library then this will certainly help you out i hope you've enjoyed this little run through of the book and i hope you enjoy it if you decide to purchase it thank you